Joining me now from New York is Trump campaign manager Kellyanne Conway. Kellyanne, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Jake. Hi. So first of all, we're glad everyone's okay. I have to ask, your social media director, Dan Scavino, and a member of Mr. Trump's family, they're retweeting misinformation that this was an assassination attempt. It was not an assassination attempt. Thankfully, should they be spreading this misinformation? Well, I'm glad you're happy that everybody's okay. That's really the main focus here. Um, it's scary. I mean, all the coverage is usually about our protesters wreaking havoc and making people feel afraid, and this certainly goes both ways. I'm with Mr. Trump and the Secret Service routinely. They do an amazing job. They are absolutely the unsung heroes, I'm sure, for Mrs. Clinton as well and the Secret Service. Um, we really respect those men and women enormously. And I'm glad nobody was hurt, but it does remind you that in these closing days, especially as the polls tighten, many of us are getting more death threats, getting more um, angry messages on social media and elsewhere. And it's a, you know, it's a pretty fraught environment there. I think that's the real focus here. I also just want to point out, because some people are, are spreading misinformation about the protester, he had canvassed for Hillary Clinton and he had donated to her campaign. So this is a Democratic plant or operative um, trying to disrupt our rally. And I think that people saw a nimble, resilient Donald Trump who would be nimble and resilient as president as well, take back to the stage, Dan Scavino telling mm -hmm. people, we're not going to be stopped. Nobody can interrupt this movement. But, you know, if you're Don Jr. Right. He, and you're he, on a he, live TV set while you're watching this unfold, it's pretty rattling to think of what may have happened to your father. So I'll excuse him that. Except it wasn't an assassination attempt. It was a, a, apparently a, a, a local voter, a Republican, uh, who says he is supporting Hillary Clinton. He, he has Hillary. given money to Hillary Clinton. He has canvas for Hillary Clinton. Yes. But he says he's a, a Republican. But most importantly, he was not trying to assassinate anyone. Uh, and I, I, here's what I'm talking about. Let's put it up. Donald Trump Jr. and Dan Scavino retweeted this, quote, Hillary ran away from rain today. Trump is back on stage minutes after assassination attempt. Again, we're very happy that this was not an assassination attempt. But why is your campaign spreading that it was? Well, how do you, first of all, that's really remarkable, I have to say, that that's what the storyline is here. Um, I thank you for reminding everybody that the, the rain chased her away. There weren't a lot of people there at her rally to begin with, and the rain just let them running for cover. I think she's got to sort of travel nonstop with Beyonce, Jay-Z, and the likes of that just to prop her up and get a decent crowd. People, by the way, are there to see Beyonce, not to see her. Um, and, you know, Jake, I want to say, are CNN going to retract all the storylines, all the headlines, all the breathless predictions of the last two weeks that it turned out not to be true? The race is over. The path is closed. It's going to be a blowout. You guys retract that, and I'll give a call to Dan Scavino about the retweet. I never reported anything along those lines. I've always been saying that this was going CNN to be a tight election, has. and even when Hillary who hasn't? CNN certainly has. CNN certainly has. You know, I love CNN, but you got to you got to be honest here. The lower third, what's always on the chirons, the panelists, the so-called experts, constantly saying she can't lose. The race is over. The path is narrowed. And you know what? I actually thank you guys in part I've for never, that. Because I've never every heard anybody time, say. I've, I've never heard anybody say the race CNN? is over. We've been saying all along that Donald wow. Trump has a path to the presidency, and she. You, you can say wow all you want. I've never said that the race was over. We can replay it as many tapes as you want. Let's move okay. on. I want to play well, something that was said on a Sunday at that same rally by the chairman of the Nevada Republican Party, Republican Party, Michael McDonald, and by your candidate, Donald Trump. Take a listen. Last night in Clark County, they kept a poll open till 10 o'clock at night. So a certain group could vote. It wasn't in an area that normally has high transition. The polls are supposed to close at 7. This was kept open till 10. It's being reported that certain key Democratic polling locations in Clark County were kept open for hours and hours beyond closing time to bus and bring Democratic voters in. Folks, it's a rigged system. Uh, Kellyanne, a spokesperson for Clark County, Nevada, said that folks who were in line before the polls closed were allowed to stay in line and vote. I'm sure you know that that's a common practice throughout the country. Um, if a whole bunch of Trump voters are in line when the polls close in Ohio, should they not be allowed to vote? Or would you want the polls closed uh, only after every single one of them in line at the closing time was allowed to vote? We just always want the law followed and the rules followed. And I do predict that you're going to see uh, really long lines, serpentine-like lines on Tuesday of folks 
there for Donald Trump. You're going to see record turnout in many of these places. But it, look, it's concerning when you, you hear reports about special favors and perhaps special rules for Democratic voters. We already know that the, the, their presidential nominee Wait, the has special, special rule? rules for what's her. This, what's What's this? I don't I'm saying understand. that we got people reports are in of line, that. If people are in line when the when the polls close, they the people who are in line at that cutoff time are traditionally and in some places by law right. allowed to vote. You want that to happen on Tuesday right. with Trump voters? That's what Clark County I was sure reportedly do. doing if, with 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 maybe, other voters. Yeah. Uh, so so I, I don't not understand been the able to Well, we've not been able we've not been able to independently verify that, but I'm telling you that we just want the rules and the law followed. And that'll be fine. But, you know, excuse us that the Democratic presidential nominee is somebody who lives with, under a separate set of rules than the rest of us. That's very clear. She gets to set up private email servers and lie about it and flout yeah, the law and, and, and compromise your kids about. and my kids' national security. Well, but that's what the voters are focused on, too. You know, we have a report this morning that she has her maid, one of her housekeepers, printing out classified information who is this person who is so selfish I don't know and so what peevish? I don't know what I don't know what referring you for, uh, but my, my question is if voters are in line it's at a cutoff time and the, and the county says you're in you're in line at seven o'clock therefore we're going to wait until everybody in line at this cutoff point can vote what's the problem if if that is true if that is true there isn't a problem but we don't know that that's true, and we'll, and we'll all take a look at Tuesday as well. But, yes, we just want the rules and the law followed. But remember, the Democratic Party well, Mr. chose Trump to said clear it was the rigged. field, and he's, saying, he's been saying that the system is rigged for a long time, and apparently no, millions of voters agree. No, but he was talking specifically agree. about you. You don't have the information. Mr. Trump is saying that the system is rigged with these voters who are American citizens voting, and I'm just trying to figure out why that's a problem, why that's an example of people of anything being rigged, people are allowed to exercise the right to vote as long as they're in time at the cutoff point. Right. Jake, on that, we agree. Now, we've now said it four times because I'm sure it's a better storyline to discuss than the tightening polls and the fact that we're playing follow the leader and Hillary Clinton is following us to Michigan, following us to Pennsylvania, following us to Wisconsin, following us to New Hampshire, all these blue states on her schedule now for an arrogant campaign that's built, that's booked fireworks. Um, in New York to celebrate her victory on Tuesday night. She's got the President of the United States running around to blue states that he carried twice just to prop her up. That's actually the big story this morning. But if we want to say for the fourth time and agree together for the fourth time that if, big, big conditional word, if the law is being followed and people are in line, they ought to be able to vote. Donald Trump's been talking about a rigged system all along. You know, his poll numbers started to tighten right after that third debate. And part of it was him talking about a rigged, corrupt system where people just can't get a break. He's the voice for the forgotten man, forgotten woman. And since then, we've seen the polls continue to tighten to the point where we're deploying our two best assets, Mr. Trump and Governor Pence, in traditionally blue states that Barack Obama carried twice with well more than 50 percent of the vote, a number Hillary <coughs> Clinton hasn't seen all along. Why is this woman who starts out with 240 electoral votes unable to find 22 more? I mean, it's absolutely confounding. She just it's can't find the extra 22. It's She's a very competitive for, race. Yeah. Very competitive race, and we've well, been covering we see it that uh, the fact we see it that, that way. The, That's, we've, yeah. w w we've been covering it that way, and we led the show with a senator from Minnesota to talk about the fact that Mr. Trump is going into he Minnesota. He sounded very today worried, by the way. He said he was worried. Your campaign's created a he final two-minute closing ad. I want I want you to take a listen to part of it. Our movement is about replacing a failed and corrupt political establishment with a new government controlled by you, the American people. The establishment has trillions of dollars at stake in this election. It's a populist message. It takes on Wall Street. Can you tell me one policy that Donald Trump would enact that Goldman Sachs will not like? Uh, he pro they, he pro they probably would not like the fact that um, he is going to renegotiate trade deals and bring jobs back from China and Mexico, make uh, Americans keep American jobs here. I, I can't imagine that, you know, that a lot of people in on Wall Street appreciate that. They seem to like the way the policies have been going more recently. Um, and, why and would look, Goldman Sachs not? Why that, would Goldman Sachs not? Why would I mean well, Goldman Sachs? Why would why would they be against uh, uh, trade deals to benefit the American worker? Well, they don't, they don't necessarily benefit Goldman Sachs. But I think more to the point, when you go back and look at TARP, which we got from a Republican president and it was uh, continued by a Democratic president, Donald Trump would not be for that. 
and that benefits all these big banks who don't didn't need the help. In some cases, were forced to take the money uh, because the government yeah, that was told 2007, them to. 2008 legislation. That was that no, but, was legislation from, that, from eight years ago. But right, well, you guys Trump's always policies, want to talk about the Iraq War, which was five years before that. Right, Look, but, he's but, going but I'm to stimulate about, like, energy he, investment. Is Goldman Sachs? Does Goldman Sachs agree? And Goldman Sachs is a big place, so let's not, you know, let's not make this an overwrought question and answer. But does Goldman Sachs want the kind of energy independence that Donald Trump wants, so that we stop relying upon uh, foreign sources of oil and we start unleashing the energy that's off of our shores and under our feet right here in the U.S. Spur economic growth within our communities. Uh, do the hydraulic fract fracturing that's unleashing the natural gas that we have right here. Uh, you know, are they, know. so there, there are many different, po well, well, there you go. Well, there's an answer. In other words, let's ask them. But the fact is, but that's not a, is a tool but that's a, but of the big Goldman banks Sachs that gave the bad her, and I'll tell you one more thing he wouldn't do. But one more thing he wouldn't mm -hmm. do, he wouldn't take gazillions of dollars in speaking fees from big banks and then pretend that somehow he's going to regulate them or somehow he's going to be for the people. I mean, if Hillary Clinton were a legitimate We have no idea what he's taking in speaking fees. Against Wall Street. Donald Trump has given speeches for money. Street. He has given speeches for money, but we have no idea how much money because he refuses to release his tax returns. Well, Hillary that's Clinton, as CNN has reported, Hillary Clinton has made tens of millions of dollars on speeches and she gives them for free now and yep. nobody seems to want to show up and listen to them. So, I mean, her crowds look like we know that she's given. Like we know that she's made that money because she's released her tax returns. We know that she's made that money because she's released no, her tax know, returns. No, we know she's no, we know she's made that money because the Clintons are all about money. And the, the, we just got confirmation that a million dollar gift from Cutter for Bill Clinton's birthday. Look, Americans look at that and they say, last time I celebrated my husband's birthday, no foreign government gave us a million dollars. Nobody said in emails we want to make sure that Bill Clinton Inc. makes about 66 million. That's a lot of money, uh, 28 million from Morocco. I mean, this is just not normal. And by the way, Americans, it's not necessary. You don't have to start the next four years under a cloud of corruption and unanswered questions by grifting and gifting among people who always put themselves first. I mean, if that weren't true, there's Jake, a lot of unanswered questions about. I, I yeah, I'm, there's a lot of unanswered questions about Donald Trump because he doesn't refuse release his tax returns. He has given speeches for money. We're told that he, we, we have no idea. We have no idea what they are because he won't be transparent with the American people about what his, yeah, where his money is or where he's there's taking money from. He's very transparent. Here's what Americans should look at when they see. Here's what they should see when they look at Donald Trump. 104 page financial disclosure form. Everybody can pull it up right now. The first major over party the candidate coffee. to not release tax returns and since 1976. Well, he's the first major party candidate to truly be outside of politics, and that's what people see. He's built a movement. Everywhere he shows, he's like five stops yesterday. Everywhere he shows, there's just thousands and thousands of people there in these so-called blue states. But we're, we're supposed to, and then the media ask, but will they vote? No, they just stood in line for five hours to go to a rally, 15,000 strong, but they're not going to show up on Tuesday. We know momentum and enthusiasm matter, and we know when people see Donald Trump, they see somebody who's a job creator, a builder, a problem solver, a fixer, somebody who's got vision, and goes to Washington, Jake, owing nobody anything, and certainly hasn't. I can guarantee you his tax returns don't show millions of dollars from foreign governments giving to his family's foundation. We All have his family's no idea foundation what they show ever, because he won't criticized. release them. Well, you can't well, we guarantee know, that because you have no idea FBI what they show because he won't release his tax returns. He won't release Is his tax returns, FBI so you can't guarantee anything. Is, Is he, he under, under FBI, FBI investigation? investigation? Did he no. ask his housekeeper to print out national security classified emails? I mean, this I'm, woman I know has that there no are, respect I know that for there the are law. Invest I know that there are investigations by the New York Attorney General into Trump University. I know that there's a court case involving Trump University. I know there's plenty of things that uh, Mr. Trump uh, has not answered questions on. I want to ask you, Mr. Trump is asking the American people to make him commander in chief on Tuesday, just 48 hours from now. I want to show you what Mr. Trump said on Saturday about U.S. military commanders participating in the Iraqi effort to recapture Mosul from ISIS. Take a listen. Whatever happened to the element of surprise? Uh, the element of surprise. What a group of losers we have. How is Mr. Trump going to be able well, to know, work uh, with the members of Central Command and U.S. military leaders if he's been calling them a group of losers? No, he's basically referring to the current commander-in-chief and his former secretary of state when he says that. He made that very clear in the debates as well. His problem is that you've got a commander-in-chief and you've got his former secretary of state, who just happens to want to be the next commander-in-chief, having an awful record, according to Mosul, an awful record on the, on the Syrian fake red lines, the Russian reset, the Middle East, 
um, northern Africa several years ago with what was supposed to be a great Arab Spring. Uh, they own, you know, they own all these hot spots around the globe, and and people ought to know that. They ought to see not what people say, but what they've done. And in the case of Hillary Clinton and her former boss Barack Obama, that has not gone well, Jake. I don't think anybody can dispute that. If, if people thought their foreign policy and national security records were so great, he, she would be running away with this. She would say, "Look, I've been there. I was in the room. I made these tough decisions. I was, I was Secretary of State. Therefore, I'm ready to be Commander in Chief." Why? Is she tied among vet why is he winning among veteran households military households so handily he's beating her by double digits because people don't trust her to be commander-in-chief they think she's disqualified herself she's unfit because she okay. runs around with confidential information on some pervert server having her maid printed out I mean this is somebody who's totally disqualified herself from being commander-in-chief based on her own actions all right Kellyanne Conway thank you so much appreciate your time good luck on Tuesday